The president is pointing a finger at the trade wars for what is happening in South Africa right now. But as I say, much of what is happening in SA is homegrown. What does the president need to do to generate growth in this economy? Thanks and good evening. I think you are quite right. The trade wars are certainly not helpful, but we have come through a very difficult 10 years as a country and we are at the early stages of a political and institutional turnaround. So really what the tre president needs to do is begin implementing many of the reform issues that our country is now talking about, in particular those reforms around state-owned enterprise and ESKIM in particular, as well as trying to free up some of the regulatory burdens and red tape to enable a much more vibrant business community as a catalyst for higher levels of economic growth. Why is it taking so long? Why isn't the president, why isn't the country moving faster on these? Some of the, some of the things that need to happen in South Africa are very obvious. Some of them are very difficult, like ESCOM, but they need action and they, they need it quite quickly. Yeah, we certainly agree that we need action and we need it quickly. I think some of the reasons why it is taking longer than many of us would like is as a result of the damage done to our economy and institutions over the last 10 years, which is greater than many of us thought it was. So inevitably that repair job is going to take longer, but certainly there is some low-hanging fruit. And in particular, I think of things like the visa regime and the spectrum that needs to be released that is certainly not contentious in any way. Mike, how exposed is Nedbank to the debt of state-owned companies and are you looking to reduce your exposure, augment your exposure at all in the light of a potential Moody's downgrade? Obviously not last Friday, but maybe at some point. Yeah, so certainly Nedbank and indeed actually the South African banking system has relatively limited exposures to state-owned enterprise. If you actually look at Eskom's debt, by far the majority of Eskom's debt is held by either asset managers or international banks or development financed institutions. So from a Nedbank point of view, if you think about our total balance sheet in excess of a trillion rand, uh, just somewhere around about 20 to 25 billion rand of that is exposed to state-owned institutions, the vast majority of which carry government guarantees. That said, it wouldn't be good for Nedbank either if there were to be another junk rating slapped on South Africa. How likely do you think it is that it can avoid that happening and what would be the impact to your bottom line? Yeah, so uh, certainly uh, a downgrade from Moody's to lose the investment grade rating is not good for anybody in South Africa. Uh, if one looks at the, the banking system, I think we're very fortunate. We have a very strong banking system. It's well capitalized. And across most banks, you know, 90 to 95 percent of the liquidity in the banking system in South Africa is domestic. So in the environment of debt downgrades, in an environment of exchange control, that money can't go anywhere. So yes, there might be some impact on pricing, but by far the larger impact would be on, on foreign lending, and, and that's very limited in the South African sector. So I think the safety and soundness of the sector would not be compromised in any way, but growth and profitability uh, would clearly be under pressure. Mike, there is a strong correlation. I hope you can still hear me. Let me hold on for a moment. Mike, there is a strong correlation between your share price and the RAND. Where do you see the RAND going? Well, I think the correlation uh, between bank share prices and the macroeconomic environment within which they operate is very strong all over the world. Uh, I think it's very difficult to guess what direction any currency goes in. Uh, just look on, on Friday night, you know, after the Moody's changed their outlook, the RAND's actually strengthened from, from Friday through to today. So I think if we are able to stave off the downgrade in by February or March next year, Moody's very clearly said that government does have a window to implement structural reform and to reduce costs to create more fiscal space. And I think if we're able to do that, we should see a continued strengthening in the RAND and clearly the opposite of that will also be true. Your share price is underperforming your peer group. What's the key to turning that around? 
Yeah, so I think if you look at the Nedbank share price, we actually outperformed the peer group last year and we've underperformed the peer group this year. So actually on an 18-month basis, we pretty much bang in line with the peer group. But if you look at the underlying makeup of Nedbank relative to all of our peers, we are more South African-centric. So really from a Nedbank point of view, we are more dependent than our peer group on the macroeconomic environment in South Africa. Mike, what can Nedbank do to expand the retail parts of the bank and also the, the commercial lending parts of the bank? Yeah, so certainly on the commercial and, and corporate side, Nedbank probably has more than 20% market share in South Africa. So, you know, that's an area that we are already very, very strong in. The key area for expansion for us has been our retail franchise, where we have around about a 13 or 14% market share. And the key focus for us to improve that has been the digitization journey that we have been on, like many banks in the world. And we actually had a really exciting stage of that right now where we have begun to actually digitize our product set in the front office environment. Our current accounts and our personal loans are all now available digitally. And I think that does give us a competitive advantage, certainly for a short term in this market. Growth is pretty anemic for the country as a whole. I'm curious as to how optimistic you are that that can pick up and, and benefit banks like yours. Yeah, so I think certainly from a growth point of view, our current outlook for growth uh, this year is around about half a percent GDP growth for the country and then looking forward for the next two years somewhere between one and one and a half percent. So that is a very anemic rate of growth for what the country needs. I think key to get to higher levels of economic growth is effectively what the president was talking about this morning. We need to stop talking about structural reform and we need to implement it, in particular with respect to resolving the financial condition of ESKIM and its operational uh, capabilities. We need to stop talking about land reform and what expropriation of land without compensation could look like. And we need to make sure that from a legislative point of view, people understand exactly in which circumstances that could take place. Place. So I think there's a number of structural reforms that are necessary, but at the same time we also need to ensure fiscal sustainability. And within that is both the help from higher levels of growth, but also cutting costs and wastage from a government point of view.